is Brianna here and welcome! Oh my gosh, I am so excited for this video. I've been wanting to do this video since I started booktube. Um, getting me into booktube, um, I really love book hauls, I still do, and I really like bookshelf tours. Um, because to me that was like the quickest way to get to jump back into knowing uh, what books are out there, what's new, what people are reading, and so that's what really got me hooked into the booktube area of YouTube. So to be able to finally, finally do this um, with my own collection is so exciting. I'm so excited. I don't know how I'm going to edit this. I don't know how I'm going to do the jump cuts. I think what I'm just going to do is, um, so I'm going to show you all four of my bookshelves. Um, there's four of them. <laughs> and um, I'm just going to take you through. Um, I'm going to start with showing you, so it's going to go unread fiction, read fiction, unread nonfiction, uh, read nonfiction, um, and then we have like coffee table books, graphic novels, uh, my foreign language books, so all my books in German, Spanish, um, and even have one in Russian, um, and I think even have one, some Latin one or something. But yeah, so um, they're going to be broken down like that. Um, I'm going to film first. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do just upload a bookshelf at a time or if I'm going to really go through the entire unread fiction fiction whatever. I'll probably do it that way. So it'll probably be, this will probably be four, a four part video or a five part video. Um, and yeah, you guys all know I'm not a pro when it comes to editing. I don't, who has time for that? So I'm not going to do any jump cuts in between each book. I'm just going to do, film a bookshelf, a row, a shelf at a time. Um, turn off the camera a row at a time, turn off the camera, and then just put all those clips together because that's going to be easiest for me. Um, as always, uh, comment down below if you've read any of these, if you haven't, if you think I should really get to one that I haven't gotten to yet. Um, I'm going to start by showing you what's on top of the shelf, if there is stuff on top of the shelf, and then I'll put my thing on a tripod and steadily show you each shelf. Um, I will not be holding my camera the whole time because that would be ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, um, as always, I hope you guys enjoy the video and uh, yeah, I'll see you at the very end whenever that video will be posted. <laughs> but yeah, uh, bye. Oh, and um, welcome to 2019 because this will be one of my first 2019 videos. I hope you guys had a good holiday and yeah, let's just get going. I've talked enough. So this is shelf number one. And this is going to begin um, the unread fiction section. And there is no organization to this shelf. Other than that, I put all of my classics in that are in very obvious like cl classic section or collection like Penguin Classics. Um, those all come first. So my apologies for the bad lighting. As you can see, you can see me um, in the reflection. Um, so on top of this first bookshelf, what normally resides is my collection of Penguin Little Black Classics. There's 80 of these, and I honestly cannot remember if I, they're snippets of classics or if they're just short stories, but I, I think they're snippets of like popular classics. Um, and I got this a uh, couple years back. Um, and I just needed it. Penguin was coming out with it. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't really buy collections like this um, or at all. I don't really buy books in a bulk collection like this. So, um, but I just needed it. Um, but I haven't yet to read it. When we moved, as you can see, I tore a little bit of the plastic off of the thing. Um, but next year, I think I really do want to get to them. Again, I think the reason why I hadn't is because they are snippets from other classics. So I wanted to make sure that I read um, the book in full before I um, dove into the little sections to see what is there and what it's about. But I just thought it was really beautiful and a really cool collection um, and that's why I got it. And then to the right here I have another collection from Penguin and this is the Rolled Doll um, series. Um, and so each one of these is full of short story collections. Some are of short stories that he wrote himself and some are short stories he picked himself to put into a collection, and they all center around a certain emotion. So we have Fear, which is the only one I've read, Tales of Terror and Suspense. We have Madness, Tales of Fear and the Unknown. We have War, Tales of Conflict and Strife. Trickery, Tales of Deceit and Cunning. Deception, Tales of Intrigue and Lies. Lust. Uh, tales of craving and desire and cruelty, tales of malice and greed. And 
I am so excited to get into all of these. It was such an intriguing concept to me. And I've, like I said, I've only read Feel, um, but it made me intrigued enough to want to keep reading. So yeah, I really like that collection. And here we go with the flick shelf. So we have The Three Christ of, of Ypsilanti by Milton Rokia. The Post Office Girl by Stefan Zweig. The Other by Thomas Tryon. The Letter Killers Club by Sigismund Kwiatkowski. <laughs> Troubles by J.G. Farrell. The Room of Morning, Two Tales of Cosmic Horror by William Sloan. Introduction by Stephen King, who's one of my favorite authors. Fear, a novel of World War I by Gabriel Chevalier. Introduction by John Berger. A Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens. Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes. The Wings of the Dove by Henry James. The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire by Edward Gibbon. Human Bondage by W. Somerset Mom. Love, Anger, and Madness, a Haitian Triptych by Marie Theo Chauvet. And I should say that these are New York, New York review books. And these, as you can see, are the modern library classics. Melmoth the Wanderer by Charles Robert Matchman. The Little Demon by Theodore Soligub. Parade's End by Ford Maddox Ford. Sons and Lovers by D.H. Lawrence. Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. The Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy. The Countess of Pembroke's Arcadia by Sir Philip Sidney. Armadale by Wilkie Collins. The Idiot by Fyodor Dostoevsky. The Dreams of the Witch House and Other Weird Stories by H.P. Lovecraft. The Book of the Courtier by Baldessa Castiglione. Fairly Honorable Defeat by Iris Bonock. Haunted Castles, The Complete Gothic Stories by Ray Russell. No Name by Wilkie Collins. King Solomon's Mines by H. Ryder Haggard. Petersburg by Andre Billy. The Raven Knights, Tales of a Thousand Nights, Volume 1.
Can You Forgive Her by Anthony Trollope. Um, this is book one in a series and me and my friend Zena were trying to read it and we just got so bored. <laughs> um, I hope to pick it back up again someday maybe but we'll see. The Poetics of Space by Gaston Bachelard. Songs of a Dead Dreamer and Grim Scribe by Thomas Ligotti. Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. Excellent Women by Barbara Pym, uh, which I'm currently reading. And that concludes my Penguin Black Classics. Now onto my Barnes and Nobles Classics. Ooh, shut the camera. I have Bleak House by Charles Dickens. Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. Paradise Lost by John Milton. A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man and Dubliners by James Joyce. Main Street by Sinclair Lewis. I have a Blue Wordsworth, which is The Complete Father Brown Stories by G.K. Chesterson. Um, I've mentioned this before on here briefly, but um, Wordsworth are my favorite um, editions of any classic, but I'll show you more over there. Um, we have The Sea, the Sea by Iris Murdoch, which is in this really cute um, vintage classic edition. I have The Vivisector by Patrick White. The Heart of the Matter by Graham Greene. Uh, the Heart of a Dog by, Vin uh, by Mikhail Bulgakov. Orlando by Virginia Woolf. Fun fact, I don't really like um, Virginia Woolf, but um, I'm told that of all the books that I should give a fair chance that this is the one that I should do it with. On the Black Hill by Bruce Chatwin. Le Les Enfants Terribles, or something like that, <laughs> by Jean Coteau. Time Must Have a Stop by Aldous Huxley. Um, and then here we have the rest of my Wordsworth classics. Wordsworth are my favorites. I just think that they're so clean um, and I really love getting my hands on a good one of these. And they're way cheaper normally than the other classics. The Plumed Serpent by D.H. Lawrence. Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. Resurrection by Leo Tolstoy. Devils by Fyodor Dostoevsky. The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. The Forksight Saga by John Galsworthy. The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall. And that concludes my unread Wordsworth collection. So now we go on to my Oxford World Classics, which are probably my second favorite editions. Bella Me by Guy de Malpassant. Pamela by Samuel Richardson. Dr. Thorne by Anthony Trollope. The Italian by Anne Radcliffe. 
Lady Audrey's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. Roxana by Daniel Defoe. McTeague by Frank Norris. The Fortune of the Rogans by Emile Zola. The Masterpiece also by Emile Zola. Tom Jones by Henry Fielding. The Decameron by Giovanni Bocciaccio. Pierre Gouraud by Honoré Del Bazoc. Poor Miss Finch by Wilkie Collins. The Red in the Back, oh, the, the Red in the Black <laughs> by Stendhal. Selections from the Cansonier by Petrarch. The Odd Woman by George Gissing. Sartor Resortus by Thomas Carlyle. Um, another copy of Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens. Um, I think I got one or the other one, I can't remember which one, um, for free. Um, and so I wasn't able to decide which one I wanted to uh, return after obtaining both of them, so they're both on my shelf. Camilla by Fanny Burney. The Mysteries of Udolfo by Anne Radcliffe. My one and only, I believe, um, oh gosh, what are, the, what are they called? Uh, Persephone books. <laughs> uh, Somewhere at a Distance by Dorothy Whipple. Um, and that concluded my Oxford World Classics, obviously, and then the rest of these are random classics that I have of other things. They're not as nice as the other ones, but they're still part of a quote-unquote collection at some point. Um, the Betrothed by Alessandro Manzoni. Christmas Carol and Other Christmas Writings by Charles Dickens. Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens. Um, whenever you see tabs like these or bookmarks, it usually means I started reading the book but wasn't feeling it at the time, and so I put it back on the shelf. The Rainbow by D.H. Lawrence. The Custom of the Country by Edith Warren. The Story of Classic Crime in a Hundred Books by Martin Edwards. Um, if you guys have followed me for a while, you know I love crime, so, <laughs> I mean, in books. <laughs> so, yeah, this one was a really exciting find, actually, when I saw it, and um, so I had to pick it up. The Elegance of the Hedgehog by Muriel Bowery. The Gambler, Bobuck, and a Nasty Story by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Siddhartha by Herman Hesse. Ivanhoe by Sir Walter Scott. And here we have five Nabokovs. We have Ben Sinister by Vladimir Nabokov, just to clarify. <laughs> Laughter in the Dark. Pinin. King Queen Knave. And invitation to a beheading. And that kind of ends all of my quote-unquote official classics. Something that's labeled definitely as part of a collection at one point. It has the word collection or whatever on it. Um, and now on to just regular old standalone um, fiction. The Book of Daniel by E.L. Doctorio. Uh, the Divine Comedy by Dante. This is definitely a Penguin classic, so actually, I should move it over here, but look at, isn't this so beautiful? I like, I haven't read it yet, 
I really need to pick it up though. The Hangman's Daughter by Oliver Pooch. Pooch? I think he's Polish. Oh my god, out of control. Okay. <laughs> the Possessed by Hodo Dostoevsky. Um, I can't remember which one. It's either The Devils or The Possessed and The Idiot. Uh, two of those are actually the same book. Binocular Vision by Edith Pullman. The Pale King by David Foster Wallace. Chantram by George by Gregory David Roberts. A Broken Vessel by Kate Ross. An American Tragedy by Theodore Dreiser. State of Wonder by Anne Patchett. This is actually the last book of Anne Patchett. Um, I'll be giving a shot if I get around to it. Um, I've read two of her books and was not impressed. I was quite bored by her stuff. Um, but I had already gotten this. I think I bought it like in bulk, so I at least am going to give it a couple pages of an attempt before dismissing it. My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. Fall on Your Knees by Anne Marie MacDonald. Turkmen's by Nicolo Barca. Um, I love this cover. <laughs> this was a cover, not a cover by, it caught my interest though, definitely because of its cover. The Roundhouse by Louise Erdich. Narcissus and Goldman by Herman Hesse. The Painted Veil by W. Somerset Mom. A Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth. The Observations by Jane Harris. The Winter Palace, a novel of Catherine the Great by Eva Stachnia. Perfume, the Story of a Murderer by Patrick Suskind. This is a very good movie with Ben Wishaw. That's when I was first introduced to Ben Wishaw, actually. Steppenwolf by Herman Hesse. Atonement by Ian McEwan. I hate movie covers of books, um, but um, this one was on sale. <laughs> and I got it a couple years ago. Haven't seen the movie. Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. Gravity's Rainbow by Thomas Pynchon. Selected Stories of Anton Chekhov. I read um, a short story collection of his this year, so I'm really looking. I think it's called The Master, The Russian Master, and that was really good. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting to this. Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Heard that um, this isn't one of his best stuff, but I really liked Slade House by him, which is, I've heard, a completely different book, but we'll see. I heard the movie was terrible, that's what it was. Nosferatu by Joe Hill. Um, I'm a little slow on the uptake and didn't realize that this was a vampire story until way late, but um, I do want to try some stuff by Stephen King's kid, and that's who this is. Um, um, and just the stuff his offspring have produced. Um, so I think I'm still gonna give this a go because I do like to break out of my comfort zone every once in a while. So yeah. The Eternal Husband by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Rebellion by Joseph Roth. The Passage by Justin Cronin. My friend Zena loves this book and they're actually coming out the TV show. So yeah. White Oleander by Janet Fitch. I have two Anne Rand books. We have The Fountainhead and Outless Shrugged. Um, her philosophy is absolutely whack, um, but I think it's best to know everything that you're talking about before you really talk about stuff. And I think just as someone who is into philosophy, everything's um, like something that I just need to read. 
Um, and my favorite series, a uh, video game series, the Bioshock series, has a lot of, it's a put, um, those movie, uh, those games to me are a philosophical masterpiece, and particularly the first one, um, revolves around a lot of her philosophy, so, a lot of nods to her stuff, so, yeah. The Mysterious Island, the Jules Verne. Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen. Trigger Warning by Neil Gaiman. The Tiger's Wife by Taya Olbrett. Three Novels by Samuel Beckett. We have Malloy, Malone Dies, and The Unnameable. Uh, the Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay by Michael Chabon. Chabon? Um, I've heard that this um, is really, really good. I've only ever read The Yiddish Policeman, I think he wrote, and I wasn't that impressed by it. Um, but I've heard amazing things about this, and it's queer lit, so woo. Ferocity by Nicola Lagioi. I have a Christy nemesis. I can't stand her. Um, but, I mean, everyone loves a good mystery, and this one's really short, so I kept it on my shelf. The Alexandria Quartet by Lauren Sturrell. Um, this comes in four parts. So I was really stoked when I found this. This is like an old Penguin classic thing. The four novels are Justine, Balthazar, Montalive, and Clea. Oops, sorry, that's way too high while well, I read that. The Rhetoric of Death by Judith Rock. The Magicians by Lev Grossman. The TV show had a um, girl, Casey something, she was in Hannibal, the Hannibal series, she played Abigail. And so when I saw she was in this, I was really intrigued and I was like, I'm going to read the book first. Well, I haven't gotten around to reading the book first, so yeah. Um, the Android's Dream by John Scalzi. I really liked Lockin by John Scalzi. I'm not going to read any more in the series, but he seems like a good lad. I follow him on Twitter. And um, I figured if I'm going to read any more sci fi, it should be by someone that I liked one of the other stuff. So, yeah. Uh, Chuck Palahniuk, or Rant by Chuck Palahniuk. Uh, Island by Aldous Huxley. Fun fact I don't didn't really like Brave New World. There was parts of it I liked, but not. Um, so when you're talking about dystopian fiction, like, yeah. Um, but there's two other of his works that I have showed so far in this video, and um, Island and another one, and so I wanted to read some of the other stuff. We have The Book Faith by Marcus Stuzak. You will see that I also have this book in German. Um, and so I have two copies of this book and I just have not gotten around to it, which is, I've heard, very shameful. Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. Geraldine Brooks, Year of, Wonder, uh, Year of Wonders by Geraldine Brooks. In a Time of Butterflies by Yulia Alvarez. Passage to India by E. M. Forster. The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. I Elizabeth by Rosalind Miles. Amber, oh forever Amber, by Kathleen Windsor. One Q84 by Haruki Murakami, which I really, really want to get around to. Started at one point, but it just wasn't the right time. Dance, Dance, Dance by Haruki Murakami. The Autobiography of Henry VIII by Margaret George. But it's fiction, so don't let the title fool you. Uh, collected Fictions by... Jorge Luis Borges. 
City on Fire by Gareth Risk Helberg. This is one I really have been looking forward to as well. We the Drowned by Kirsten Jensen. No matter what, this book is getting read in 2019. Okay, it's happening. Tales of the City by Armistead Maupin. Maupin? Serum by Edward Rutherford. And London by Edward Rutherford. All of his books are named after like cities and or countries and um, yeah. Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurdy. Tried to start this as you can see from the tabs and the bookmark but it wasn't the right time. House of Leaves by Mark Z. Daniel Lusky. The Executioner's Song by Norman Mailer. So excited. It's like a true crime and in the essence of like in Cold Blood by Truman Capote, so you know, right up my alley. Uh, the Quinnox by Charles Palliser. 